We're continuing on with the devotional on having issues with God. And last time we talked about authority. If you missed that one, go back and watch it because it's the foundation for all of our issues with God. This next one is called Delays in His Promises. This is when we pray for something, ask for something, and it seems to never happen and maybe never happen in our lifetime. Maybe we clearly heard a word of a promise for our kids, but all we have is a child that's lost in despair. Maybe we've read a verse about his provision, about asking and receiving, and we believed, but we lost everything and we're still not seeing the blessing. Maybe we pray daily and for months and years for something we know that God has said he will do, and yet we see nothing before our eyes that proves that he will come through. That kind of praying and waiting and hoping causes us all to be weary. And God knew we would grow weary because there are so many verses in the Bible about waiting on the Lord. Those that are weary asking to come, he has to come and receive rest and all sorts of encouragement for those who are waiting and hoping. <clears throat> all of this causes us to have issues with God and his word. Why would he promise healing and restoration and yet we sit in sickness, loss, and need? So let's look at ourselves with our own kids. Once a kid drives a sidewalk battery operated car, then he wants a real car, but obviously he has to wait until he's old enough to get a license, learn the rules and be safe on the road. Children want to play house and pretend to cook, but again, they have to wait until they mature in their bodies and minds to marry, buy a home and safely cook on a stove. Those are practical examples of waiting and how it's necessary. But you might say, what about waiting an entire lifetime for an answer to a prayer and never seeing it before we die? I know many that have experienced that very thing. And what if God never comes through and we never see the answer of yes to the promise that we know he gave us? Sure, we've all heard about the fact that life isn't just down here. There's eternity and perhaps that concept helps us a bit. And we're to have endurance and patience in the waiting. And that's true as well. But many times we end up in a sinkhole of despair in the waiting and we cannot see the light of day. <clears throat> We've talked about Job before and how he finally did get his healing. Abraham finally got his promised son. Noah waited and waited for the rains to subside and they did and his family emerged safely from the ark. Story after story of waiting is told in the Bible. Look how long the generations waited for the Messiah to come, and many died without ever seeing him in person. And there are some plants, and we all know this, that take 30 years of growth before they bloom. Farmers wait for rain, for seeds to sprout, and there's nothing we can do to hurry up the process. Psalm 5.3 says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you, and I wait expectantly. Psalm 135 says, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. In the book of Jude, the very last book next to Revelations, near the end of the Bible, sums up this experience in life that we are called to be a part of, and that is waiting. Waiting is not punishment. God is not withholding his hand because we're not favored or any other such lie about our creator. Remember, he loves us. He's inherently good. Jude recalls stories of those that had chosen to cast aside their belief in God and what happened to those people. Casting aside our belief in God in times of waiting is defying his authority. It really is. Toying with unbelief and then deciding to start slandering God's faithfulness to us does not end well for us. In verse 10, it says, People slander whatever they do not understand. And look at these words. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Remember how we said God placed all things in order and season with his authority and boundaries over everything he created? These verses indicate that those who begin to slander the very essence of God are like all of creation without a purpose. And then near the end, we read this. Dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of Jesus to bring you eternal life and be merciful to those who doubt. To him who's able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and joy and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and glory.
There it is again, affirmation of God's authority, resting in the knowledge that He loves us and leaning into His mercy when we doubt. God is able to keep us from falling into despair while we wait, and I can't tell you when your promises will be fulfilled, but I can tell you that the God who is near to all of us is very present in the waiting, and He's promised that that presence will be enough to sustain us and keep us upright and strong.